Listen, if Mark gets canceled for any reason, just know I had nothing to do with it. Leave me out of it. No, no. He said to me the other day, he goes, Mark, if you ever get canceled, just know I'm the one who canceled you. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I was like, damn, it really be your own people. That's crazy. That's... You know what's crazy is you got that phrase from me too. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, that's you cr- You're saying I got that's crazy from you? No, it'd be your own people. Oh, yeah. It'd be your it'd be own 100% people. got that. Yeah. <laughs> Use your own words against you. Literally. <laughs> Honestly, I use quite a few of his sayings now. I'm trying to be I'm trying to be cool. That's what I'm, happens I'm like, like when you are with someone for so long, you know, like But it's only one way yeah. over here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just like Mark takes all the sauce. There's not really any ta- sauce to take from Mark. You don't so use any like, of my white isms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh god. Hey friend, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, buddy? Yeah. Buddy. <laughs> What's up, sport? <laughs> Sport is crazy. Sport might be the most condescending thing you could say to another man. Oh, God. Listen, I don't sport. know. I hate buddy. Like, when someone calls me buddy, I'm just like, pal. Slap the fuck out of your ass. Just say yeah. bro or dude yeah, like, or something. Like, why are you calling me yeah. buddy? You know what I hate? You know what I hate? Boss. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't boss. Like it that much. No, so that's, boss. that's, that's not that, bad. that I feel like they're trying to, like, I don't know. It's but, when you're trying to get, like, it, it's like you're trying to schmooze somebody. Yeah. Don't yeah. Be. I think it's just because Mark is like not a boss, so it's just like it doesn't really. <laughs> it, when someone calls you that, you're like, it doesn't even describe me, Excuse man. Like, me. Yeah, you're, so, you're so funny, Sonny. You should be a comedian. You know, you should go into stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah. We should do a night where we uh, go do an open mic. Oh, it's oh, both it's of us. so fun, dude. Y'all, Wait, are y'all we just roasting each other, or is it like, or are we doing like? Like no, we you just go, like you we have just, a set, then I have a set. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And whatever you know, whatever the open mics are really is. fun and and really, but but you get real nervous like if you've never done it. I feel like you would do amazing. But but I did really good for a while. I feel like I oh you did you've like, done this. Yeah, okay. I I did stand up for a little bit, only a few sets. My first one did not so great, but my like I was uh, back back when I was doing it, I was doing like um uh like dating sets because i wasn't married at the time so that was that was pretty good but now that i'm married it doesn't make as much sense to single people that's fair that's fair mm-hmm. well that's ashley welcome sick, to the though. podcast we yeah. gotta before we go further into this i'm like we gotta just start off with ashley welcome to oh, the pod thank you how we doing great great uh, i just uh landed yesterday in la and been kind of doing a bunch of stuff seeing all my people so that brings me here there we go there we I go that. so ashley give everybody like a because I feel like, I feel like the majority of us met Ashley when you were in your, uh, I don't know how else to put this, your boob era, you, you <laughs> my know, titty just, phase. Yeah, you know, you were just you yeah. were bull posting boobs. You know what Mark basis. was paying attention to? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never looked below the neck out of uh, respect, uh-huh. but yeah. but the, <laughs> out of respect, <laughs> out of respect. But with that, what like how do you explain to people what you do, and then also kind of like. You know, if I'm explaining to somebody how I got, I guess, into like Web3 and all of that, I'm like, I started minting NFTs and then I had Frank on the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Do you, are you like, I got into crypto and then I started posting about boobs? Or like, what is, what is your like intro you tell people? So it, it's crazy because I, I've kind of left, left that era mostly behind um, instead of in front. Um, but <laughs> I could have myself on that, that one. Was, that was nice. That was nice. That was a nice slapper. <laughs> Uh, but when I first got in, it was all about Dogecoin because that, that was the very first crypto I bought and I bought it back in 2018 and then 2021, January, my friend calls me and was like, oh my gosh, check your Dogecoin. And I made a lot of money and I was like, oh my God, like I, you know, I'm a genius. Um, so I started going full on into crypto fast forward to like June. Um, there was the Doge pound that minted. I got one of those NFTs. Um, And I got super into NFTs and then um, I saw, I I was getting a lot of messages because at the time I had changed my profile picture to uh, like from a cartoon face to my face and I was getting a lot of DMs from guys and they were all about, you know, show me your titty, show like that's the one, number one. That's an aggressive. Yeah. Or, or it was just dick pics, just lots of dick pictures. That's how I met Sonny. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's so cute. You sent me a dick pic and then I blocked you? (laughs) And it was love from there. Uh, but that was like my, uh, I, I was sick of it. I was just so annoyed with it. I started uh, minting the um, the dicks that people had sent oh, me no on way. the blockchain. No way. Yeah. 
and it went viral <laughs> on reddit shit. yeah so that a lot of people knew me from that that's um, insane that's originally. savage as hell that's actually Love that, insane though. i i never heard so that funny. that's fucking hilarious well it, it got it got me a lot of mixed reactions you know um like we were talking about earlier before the podcast um i i was uh, kind of in a circle where i was being chased by incels for some reason i, I don't know what where it happens but i guess when you post selfies as a woman it tends to happen sometimes um so after that um then there was all this meta of everybody making nft projects just anybody just random people making nft projects and everybody was just kind of doing it, it was it was very um it, it was um what what it was like august 2021 back it was a free-for-all eth nfts free-for-all you could just mint whatever you wanted and nobody cared um and, and that's where you like originally started out was mostly eth nfts like mm -hmm. in, the, in the early early runs like were you around during like the board eight mint and everything or was it a little bit oh, i was that? around but i thought nfts were stupid at the time so that was april 2021 of course you know i got into it after uh but um I ended up uh, making, be because of all the people making NFTs, I made my Crypto Titties NFT. And I just minted it on the blockchain. It was just one originally. And it was just this little pixelated, uh, you know, woman with boobies, her boobies out. And it was just so simple and basic. It was like crypto punk style. And so I just put it out there and I was like, oh, you want me to show my titties? <laughs> and there it is. Um, and Mark bought all of them. <laughs> Mark bought all of them. Hey, and that's how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When I'm, not, I'm not even going to make jokes based off that. We are trying to have a, you know, a, a comfortable <laughs> environment for our guests. Uh, you know, I'm not going to make a joke back off that. very serious conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so, you meant, so you meant these pixelated boobs, basically. And, and what happens from there? Well, I did not expect anyone to buy them, but I had one person buy my first uh, NFT for 0 0.2 ETH. And at the time, ETH was pretty up. So I was like feeling real good about myself. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And then I had people DMing me and wanting more. They, they were like, can you make one for me? Can you make one like this Marvel character? Can you make one like this? And so I just kept making them and people kept buying them. And that was and, like $700, 0 0.2 ETH. Is, mm -hmm. yeah, it was a lot back then. Yeah, There's so I was, lot, but yeah. I was excited. I got 250 people ordering these NFTs or just buying ones that I made randomly. Um, it, wow. yeah, it was crazy. And I, I was like, I, wild. I mean, that NFT era was pretty insane. I mean, you had fucking, what, what was it? The fucking rock that sold for like a million dollars. Yeah. It's like that rock is still selling. Rock. Yeah. It's still selling. It just rock. keeps yeah. selling for way too yeah. much money. So it's just like that. I feel like that era of NFTs was kind of, it was, it was pretty insane. I'm not going to lie. You could literally mint anything and sell it. It was crazy. And um and then i had somebody reach out to me and they were like hey would you consider since you're you know a breast advocate uh to donate to breast cancer and i was like you know my friend actually had died a couple of years before from breast cancer um and i thought that was a great idea so i started donating to breast cancer and um I ended up like donating about, I, I originally committed to 25%, but I donated uh, 40% because I just kept, you know, it, it was exciting. It was like every time one sold, I would donate and then I wanted want to even the number. Um, and then I got a um, email from the American Cancer Society who I'd been donating to. And they were like, we've never seen anyone in this area donate this much through this channel. Cause it was uh, the giving block. It was pretty new. Uh, not a lot of people were donating through crypto. Um, I was actually one of the first to donate in crypto from an NFT project. So we ended up uh, having lunch. And so she, the, the rep that I met was super excited and they wanted to learn more about crypto and NFTs. They didn't know anything. Uh, so I started having a lot of meetings with them and um, I ended up uh, getting an interview with Bloomberg. So oh, I wow. went, yeah, that was back in 2021. Um, or, or actually beginning of 2022. So, so January, 2022, I, I go on Bloomberg and that's how a lot of people hear of me is Bloomberg. And I was still in my titty era, but I was, you know, doing it now for breast cancer awareness before I was just doing it out of spite, just cause I was so mad at all the, the people reaching out to me wanting <laughs> news. And then I, it became something else. And then as time went on, 
uh, people that weren't around before didn't really understand the titty thing. They just thought I was doing it because I was a whore. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, a lot of people just thought that I was, um, you know, uh, and not many people knew I was married at the time, I guess. So it just became something that was started out as something like fun and and silly and for a good cause and originally for a spiteful cause but you know and, and i decided at some point after getting so many people just tearing me down from it i wanted to change the way that i did things because i still thought it was a good message but i was like i, I want to change myself so i started creating content and it was mainly in the bear market that I started creating content. And then people started knowing me for my videos. I started making I the videos. The high reviews. The, the high, high reviews. Went up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I still do those, those sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you got to. I mean, yeah. But before but, we get into the next wave of your content, how much mm -hmm. do you think you ended up donating then uh, for breast cancer research? It was about, um, if you convert ETH from what it was now, is about 70000 Oh, my or something. God. Damn. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Hats off to you for doing that. And, and, and obviously, you didn't have to give as large of a percentage as you did. So hats off to you for doing that because you turned something that I, I, I've never heard any of this. And, like, I always – I remember first seeing your Twitter account, and I remember just being like – I don't know. She posts about boobs a lot and it's like, and she's got funny content and everything like that. And I was like, mm. I don't really know much about her other than like, she's very funny and these posts tend to go viral. But the fact that you took that, you know, kind of like the, the incel dudes hitting you up, saying mm. the weird shit, you take that, put your own spin on it, take the power back in the situation, end up raising a ton of money, donating 70,000 of that. That's am amazing. So hats off to you for doing that. Thank yeah. you. I yeah. remember, yeah, I remember you talking about like the breast cancer, a little like awareness, um, I, probably towards like the latter of like that type of content. But I think the thing that I love the most is just like sometimes you just do shit without realizing where it's going to go. And it sounds like that that's what like essentially happened, right? You were just like, fuck it. Like these dudes keep hitting me up for this shit. I'm just going to do something funny and fun and like turn it into like, so, like try and turn it into something positive. And that ended up just like, causing mm -hmm. this uh domino effect of like something extremely positive right like donating all this money to breast cancer awareness and then even from there like continuing to evolve um on your own content journey mm -hmm. and like creating your platform i think it's always just like it's fun to hear about like where people's like first ideas were in the space and just like i don't know a testament that it's just like you can always continue just to like ideate and go into different lanes and do different things like that's mm -hmm. like the beauty of, uh, I, I think, the, the space that we're in. I agree completely. That, that's what I love because you can start out as anything and you can just continue to evolve. Where do you see yourself going from here? I mean, I know obviously your content's changed a lot over the last like year or so. Like what would be, I don't know, like perfect world. Where do you see Ashley Decan content, you know, two years from now? Oh, man. Um, well, something that, I, that I've really been into is travel content. I do a lot of vlogs now. Um, so I actually came here because, um, I'm getting some vlog content for, uh, Killer Wells season two. So, uh, and then I'm going to do some content in San Francisco and Vegas for, um, a couple of their companies. And so I really, honestly, what my dream has always been since forever has been to be like a travel style vlogger, but kind of do like an Anthony Bourdain style of content where I go with people that I really like from all over the world to all these cool places and, you know, learn not only about them, but about, you know, now crypto, because that's like a big passion of mine. And then just learn about the world, like, you know, education plus travel plus fun. That's, that's really what I'm all about. So that's kind of like where I see myself. You still doing the uh, skits a little bit? Yeah. The only reason I ask is because my favorite one, and Mark is gonna hate me for this, my favorite <laughs> skit was during Art Basel when you put out the one of influencers trying to get to parties without tickets. <laughs> Cause Mark did that. And when he did that, he was so pissed. And I sent him your video and I was like, This is you. <laughs> to be fair, this was me going to a D God's party. And I was like, yeah, I, you know, the registration thing He thought he, thing he, thought he was above everyone. No, yeah. it was, it was oh the, the ticket system was broken. It wouldn't verify my shit. I was irritated. I was like, I'll show up. It won't be an issue. 
It was, a slight, it, was an it was a slight issue. <laughs> that uh, party was what what made the video happen because so many people had the same problem and a specific er- interaction. I I go outside because I've been at the party for hours at this point, and then I go outside and I see all the people saying the exact same thing, and I'm like, this is so fucking good. I'm gonna get this video. What, out they were like, you not know who I am? Yeah, literally, everybody showing their Twitter profiles. Oh, that, like, okay, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do that. Dude, that's funny as fuck. Like, no, bro. that skit was so funny. I probably watched that shit so many times just <laughs> laughing my ass off and just like looking at Mark throughout the weekend just being like, ah. <laughs> was one time I pulled that. One time. Okay, listen. <laughs> one time. That security guard time. did so good. That was his very first anything and he was he was so nervous. He was like, I'm so sorry. I, I cursed at you. So, <laughs> you know, hey. That was such a, yeah, I'm, I'm here for the skits. I'm here for all the skits. Mm-hmm. That shit was hilarious. It happens. It happens. But okay, Ashton, here's my, here's my question for you. I feel like when it comes to, you know, web, like we have a lot of really talented web three content creators, right? We got people like TG. We got people like Mika. We've got Rasper. We've seen people like uh, Meebs. We've got. Shout out to men. Uh, shout out to men. We've yes. got obviously Soul Jakey, absolute legend, Solana Steve, all these different people who are creating content. Um, we, you know, so many, so. OG, how do we not mention OG? OG? So many, Mika. so many, so yeah. many talented people, and so, like, what is what? What are your thoughts on? We're now seeing more people create content that also caters towards a Web two audience, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of like, you know, TG did his interview with Iggy Azalea. Obviously, there's far more people that are going to pay attention to that than just Web three people. There's going to be a ton of Web two people that are going to pay attention to that. You've got, uh, you know, Soul Jakey did his interview with Caitlyn Jenner, and like. That was actually like when I was listening to that, and I mean, I was I was there while he was recording it, and when all that was happening, I was like, dude, these are stories that I didn't even hear Caitlyn Jenner tell when she was on the Nelk podcast, right? And so, what are your thoughts on like as we get into this next bull market, and you know, we're seeing more and more eyes and attention on Web three and crypto and all of that, but we have these established creators and things like that. Are you looking to create content that's Web3 specific and have the Web2 people who are coming into the space just find out about you from that? Or are you going to also create content that caters towards the Web2 audience and kind of brings those people to, I guess, like recognize you, pay attention to you, and then they learn about crypto because of that? I, I've kind of always leaned more Web2 content and, and kind of like made myself more Web3 in the past year. Like when the bear market happened, I pretty much um was all about web 2 content because i felt like that was the best way to onboard people is to start at zero everybody was at zero nobody was really tweeting about crypto or anything else um felt like everybody left so i started making my content more web 2 based and then i would sprinkle in some web 3 now i'm more web 3 than web 2 but i think that making it more palatable to web two and sneaking, you know, sprinkling the crypto is really good because a lot of people's perceptions, like I went to um, a gaming convention in San Francisco and one of the most common things when I interviewed people is they were like thinking that crypto is a scam. Like anytime they heard about blockchain gaming, oh, that's a scam, oh, that's a scam. Anytime I talk to anyone, oh, isn't there a lot of scams? That's the most common thing. And then even in crypto, people are always calling something a scam. So honestly that that's the worst part about crypto a lot of people won't pay attention to it because of that so if you sprinkle in crypto when you when it comes to really good content then i feel like that's the best way to do it because whenever i was doing heavy web 2 content and then i would mention web 3 people would dm me all the time like what is this like i always heard it was a scam i always heard this and that and my perception was so di- different i didn't know normal people did it and i think that that people have to see people um, that don't talk about crypto all the time before they are willing to accept somebody that, that talks about crypto at all. 100%. I think there's still that stereotype of people thinking that like everybody that's in crypto just fucking is on the laptop in like a dark room all, all day and night. Yep. Um, and that's definitely not the case. I mean, it's probably 60% of people, but it's <laughs> yeah. but, you know, not on my laptop. I'm not phone, really but. in the <laughs> trenches, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's like, you know, even just like going outside, going to IRL events and like going to other types of events. And like, you know, once that conversation starts coming up, I feel like people like, it's funny because I feel like once you kind of like even just mention it a little bit, cause I try not to even just like say it that much. They'll be like, Oh, what do you do? I'm like, Oh, I do this, whatever in crypto. Mm-hmm. And it's like just allowing them to kind of guide the questions of like, 
you just you kind of just see like that they're like curious but they're like oh i have my like it's a scam and this and i've never gone into it but i'm still curious so i'm gonna ask you like five six questions about crypto and just like keep going down that rabbit hole and i i find that that's a a very good way to just like i don't know gauge interest from people within that crowd is just like letting them lead with whatever questions that they have and you know whatever you can answer you can answer I look at it too of like, for me, I think one of the most interesting things you can do is take your content to the web two audience and entice them enough to go like, what are you doing? And so a good example of that is, you know, in the last, like, uh, honestly, even in the last like three or four months, going to New York and showcasing like the great times that we were having at those events, going to Austin, Texas, doing the same thing, you know, we're at karate combat and it's like, you know, we're, we're sitting there and we've got, you know, the fire festival dude fighting in the background and people, and then there's Joe Rogan and Shane Gillis and whatever sitting ringside. Right. And so you have people who are like, how, how did you get there? What is that all about? You know, and all these kind of things it starts to have them asking more and more questions. Right. Then we uh, just went to uh, wherever the hell we were just uh, Tampa, Florida, and, <laughs> and we're at, uh, you know, the Killer Threes game, Big Three stuff. And so people are like, oh, wait, so how are you guys like sitting courtside? And I'm like, OK, well, now I got to tell you about D-Gods so I can explain that. And then once I explain D-Gods to you, I'll explain that they own one of the teams. And that's how we ended up sitting courtside. Now we're at the you know nightclub that night with the players and having fun with them and and you know hanging out with them. And then it's like we're creating all different sorts of content and stuff like that, which causes people to just go like, "What are you doing?" Right? Because it looks fun. And if you and if it looks like you're having fun, and we are having fun, obviously. But like if it looks like you're having fun, people are naturally just going to be like, "Hey, I want to learn more about whatever you're doing because whatever you're doing just seems like a good time." Right? Mm-hmm. And so. That's kind of how I feel like with my content, what I try to cater towards is showcasing like, hey, we have a lot of fun times on this shit. And it's not saying that we don't have like the bad days. I think we all, you know, make fun of the, you know, kind of our, you know, I don't know, kind of make fun when like this, when we have like the shitty days like yesterday, when yeah. we're, at, we're all like, we're all, you know, kind of like, hey, we're going to zero. Okay. Hey, we'll be back in bear market, you know, whatever. And then today bull market's back on and that's just <laughs> how the space goes. But, Man. you know, it's like just creating content that gets the average person to go, what are you doing? Cause it just looks like you're having a good time. And that's kind of how I feel like we'll end up onboarding so many more people. And that's how we change the narrative of crypto is a scam and all this kind of stuff. Because, you know, crypto, especially in the last cycle, it was like, there was nobody doxxed, uh, like it wasn't mm-hmm. a thing. And now it's like, we have a ton of people doxxed, ton of content creators, ton of content creators that aren't just making those videos of like, here are the 10 coins you should be buying right now. Uh, you know? Oh my God. Hate those. It's like, that's all the 2021 cycle was, was those mm-hmm. people would have their videos go, you know, and we will talk about our bags and talk about what we're buying right now and everything. But we're not saying to people like, here are the coin. If you're looking for generational wealth, here are the coins you should be buying. You know, it's just like that scammy kind of, you know, car salesman type bullshit. Yeah. And we have, uh, that's why I feel so good about the space right now is because we have so many talented creators that are just making enjoyable content that again, people from the outside go, well, what is this? What are you guys doing? And what is this whole world about? And I think the more that we lean into that, the more that we're going to have people from the outside come in and go, okay, Hey, this is something I want to learn about. Mm -hmm. I think people naturally just, um, they tend, I, I feel like they tend to really, really, I don't know. I would say like get enticed by either the obviously entertainment factor, right? You have someone like a soul Jakey video or a skit or something like that. Something that's funny, something that makes you laugh and you're like, okay, you might go check them out. Or then it's like the lifestyle, right? Um, and if people are seeing that you're like here or there, you're traveling or, you know, to your point doing like vlogging and travel content, um, or your court side, or you're like in the club with like, you know, the, the players and some other people and, and whatever, and people are tagging you on stories and like, you know, that's a whole other platform, right. With Instagram. And I think all of that just like lends itself to then people being taking more of an interest of like, because, because they also want to like strive for something like that. Right. Like they also want to strive for some sort of, you know, lifestyle that is any of those things, all of those things, whatever. Um, and I think that's where the real, I think that's where it clicks more about like, okay, this is why I would want to get into crypto um, because it can actually open things up within my life and actually have a benefit on me on a day to day basis um, versus it just being like, oh, I'm just investing in some digital Mm -hmm. currency. I have no idea what the fuck I'm going on. Yeah, I I like I like that because so many of my friends now want to get into crypto because they see that I'm going everywhere. That's exactly (laughs) right. 
Yeah. I mean, and I think that's where, I mean, we've talked about it in previous podcasts, but like, that's where I feel like the space learns a ton from like video game culture. Cause like video game culture was very much similar to crypto in the sense of like, it's commonly people sitting at their computer in the room and like nobody else around them. Right. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden we started having streamers that came about and then you have like phase clan and everything that, that comes about and becomes so massive. And it's, you know, these gigantic creators who are making millions of dollars and millions of people watching their stuff and they're traveling all over and it becomes so fun for people to pay attention to and learn. And now those creators have their own like, personalities and people know them for more than just what they stream and stuff like that. They actually know them as humans. They see them do all kinds of other stuff. They're curious when they go and do things that are outside of them just playing the game. Right. Mm -hmm. And I look at that as the same thing with, uh, with crypto is that like, we all have more factors to us than just crypto. (laughs) We love crypto, but there's like, we all have our different passions. Like Sonny has been posting his basketball content and whatnot from literally ever since I've known him. And It's like, you know, as a result of that, he's going to get people who ask him questions about that. If I'm posting something about like, I don't know, Pilates or, or, (laughs) oh my God. I would love to see the video. Yeah, yeah, at least just say fucking the Detroit Lions. So, Detroit Lions. Yeah, okay, that's more about that. That was was good, good content. But honestly, it's like the reason why I did that was because similar to what you were talking earlier about, it was like bear market, everybody. You know, it was like, especially during that time, August 2023, mm-hmm. D-Gods was, you know, down bad, tremendous. Season three happens, all of that. And everybody's making the same Doom posts of like, if you sold your D-God at this point, you'd be up X, Y, and Z. And I was like, man, if I have to see another one of these motherfuckers <laughs> that just creates cheap engagement content by pointing out the obvious and it's like to me you know what though that was the same time that the fucking monetization of twitter happened oh yeah because engagement farming man i feel like there is definitely a correlation between bear market monetization of twitter and everybody just becoming these negative fucks that are just so annoying to see on the timeline like 100 percent, and especially because during that time the first check that you get from from the you know Elon Stemmy oh, is big. <laughs> is big because it's a large period yeah. of time. It's not the two week period that it is now. It's like a one year period, right? So everybody was getting those first big ones where it was like, I'm getting five k, I'm getting two k, I'm getting you know whatever, and everybody's like, damn, okay. I'm just going to tweet out, fuck Frank D. Gods, and I'm going to get engagement, <laughs> and then I'm going to pay my rent. You know, it's like, and and that that content was going so viral, and at the time... Crazy they didn't use that as utility. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, like, the you know, the space was, was kind of boring. There wasn't anything exciting happening. There weren't big mints going on. It was like everything was kind of backfiring. It was like Azuki had, you know, put out all mentals, and that hadn't gone well, and then D. Gods happens, and that doesn't go well, and it's like... And, you know, the crypto space had been stagnant for eight months or whatever. And then finally crypto starts to rip after that. But before that, I was like, I have to start making content that doesn't just depress the shit out of me. And so I was like, you know what? I'm a diehard NFL fan. I've been gambling since I was 13. Why don't I just start making, you know? Yeah, sure. Uh, Yeah, probably. Um, (laughs) I was like, let me just start making content about the Detroit Lions. I know football. I can talk about this. And it was like, all of a sudden I'm seeing, you know, a hundred thousand views, 200,000 views. I think a video Sonny took got like a million views. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, and, and it was all these people coming in, you know, from outside the space that were like, you know, Hey, you know, and talking to me about, uh, talking to me about football, talking to me about whatever was going on, basketball at the time, all these different sorts of things. And so it's like, you know, it's creating content that caters towards more people because that's how we eventually bring more people into the space. Because if we're just sitting here yelling into a void, like, hey, pay attention to crypto, pay attention to crypto, pay attention to crypto, everyone's going to be like, you motherfuckers are annoying as shit. But if you create content that goes, oh, hey, that's entertaining, good content. And then, oh, what do you do? Oh, you work in crypto. I thought crypto was kind of a scam, but like, you don't come across like a scammer. Let me, let me learn more. That's how we onboard people, in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. I mean, some of the most viral content I ever made was was more catered to Web 2 than than Web 3. And I think uh, I think a lot of people um, think that they have to come up with this crazy nonsense to go viral. But a lot of the Web 2 stuff like I mean, we, we even talked about this earlier. The Hawk Tua girl, you know, took took five seconds of her time, really. And she is an uh, international sensation now and over just something small. And that was all led to just people are, are dying for, for something different. And that's all you got to do is just be different. Yeah. She knows what she's talking about. 
It's crazy though, but well, like <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna. <laughs> She got, like, she got fired though. You did you hear that? She got fired. I from heard a that was a rumor. Like, I thought job or something like that. I think that's so fucking lame. If, I, if yeah, I'm gonna be lame. honest, if I'm her, if I'm her, I'm dropping OnlyFans right the fuck now and not posting a singular wait wait a singular sexy photo on there. I'm just entrapping all these people that have been like engagement farming off of her, and I'm just I'm I'm posting nothing but content that's already on her Instagram, and I'm uh, she's make she'll run up a few million dollars in like a month or. A week, she has honestly, to do. might even be a week, Fair. and then you know what? All these people have been using her for content. It's time for her to make a bag off of it. You know, she's Fair. been selling hats, so the we gotta hawk to do a more hat. than hats. We yeah. gotta do. I don't know if I'm wearing a hawk to a hat. I mean, I would. I mean, hawk to a twenty-four. You know, that's a better slogan than we have. <laughs> oh, is that what the hat oh, says? Hawk to a twenty-four. Hawk to a twenty-four. That's amazing. <laughs> I hope she makes. I hope she makes millions because, like, for it. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine being like. You know, she's probably out that night, drunk, enjoying herself. Somebody comes up to her, asks a question. She probably thinks this video is going to get maybe 500 views. It gets, a, you know, probably a few billion views. And she's probably like, you've got to be shitting me. Like, she's got to explain this to dad. She's got to explain this to... She's got to explain this to dad. <laughs> you know oh, I mean? gosh. You know, I mean, there's so many... It's just like, I can't imagine her next family gathering. Everyone's like, oh, we all... We all saw your video, honey. <laughs> Good job, honey. Yeah. Hey. Just don't hawk to her on us, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope she makes it back because that's that's tough. <laughs> that's tough. That's tough. But that's how it be. And that is how it be. I do want to know. When you were on ETH, did you hate Soul? <laughs> oh no, I've never hated Soul. In Word. fact, one of I I got a Catalina whale. That that was one of my first. Uh, that was actually my first Solana NFT, and that was back in November of 2021. Never, never, ever hated Solana. I never said one bad word about Solana. Maybe a joke every now and then, but that's because everybody was joking. But um, I was fortunate enough to get in early on on Solana, and I actually befriended a lot of people there versus on ETH they're such it's so weird how different they were because it's almost like there's more millennials on ETH and there's more zoomers on Solana maybe maybe I'm crazy but that's kind of how it feels sometimes um and I, I just feel like they're they're less they take themselves less seriously on Solana and I love that because an ETH it's all before you know you have the the yield of sources you know if you don't have 100k PFP you know or 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 that kind of sentiment <laughs> like we were yeah, first it's been we were, down well, <laughs> yeah. whoever said that and now none of us have down. 100k <laughs> yeah, yeah no, none, none of us, us have <laughs> not 100k PFP unfortunately if you have 1k you're doing oh, all right yeah, man. Yeah. oh fuck yeah god okay. yeah but no, that's what's up. it yeah. just it just felt like I don't, I don't know i i never i i'm even into cardano everybody talks shit about cardano but i go to um uh events every year for cardano so i mean i just i just love blockchain i just i love all of them you know it, it, that, and that's the thing to me i've never understood the maxi approach because like for example we talked about uh, probably three or four months ago, we started talking about, well, eventually every once in a while, I'll just say on, on the podcast, some of the coins that we've been buying recently, whatever. One of the ones that we mentioned, cause there was like that time period, probably January, February, where all of a sudden people just started talking about base. Right. And we mentioned Brett when Brett was at a hundred million market cap, it's at 1.6 billion now. And it's God. like, are you against the 16 X or are you <laughs> like, like, are you so bag biased that you're against that? Cause like, Bro, I don't give a shit what chain it's on. If I can make a 16X, I want a 16X. And I'm like, you know, and, and when somebody was was talking to me about it, I think it was Patty that was talking to me about it. He was like, you know, Coinbase obviously pushes the shit out of base. And if they're going to push the shit out of it, they're going to push the shit out of the number one meme coin on that on that blockchain. And it's Brett. And I was like, well, that that's enough to sell me. And, mm-hmm. and that's what sold me. And so it was like, who cares about my bag buys? It doesn't mean that all of a sudden I'm going to start bull posting base all the time. But what it does mean is I'm going to pay more attention to it. And if I feel like I can make a bag off of it, then I'm going to go try to make a bag off of it. Who cares about bag buys? But I do feel like that's something that was a 2021 cycle aspect of things of like people were very much chain maxis. 
I don't mess with anybody who's not on my chain, blah, 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 blah. And now I feel like we're all at the point where bear market, we just got, we were all so down bad at that point that it was like, listen, we're all broke. So let's just hang out together. So, just I let's mean, be friends. Yeah. I mean, think about all the, all, think about all the people that fucking missed out on even just buying Solana at that 10 to $20 range. Oh they my were gosh. Just like, Fuck Solana. And like all this shit, we're ETH, we're this or all this other shit. And it's just like, brother you could have had from 20 to 200 dollars in a year you know what i'm saying if you just like put it put in some size and i think when it comes to that it's like to your point like profits is profits like yeah that that's that's what it comes down to and there's a bunch of dope people on all these different chains and like there's not going to be one true one that like is like the chain of of whatever we use like i guarantee you there's going to be like I don't know, a couple of years from now, like people are going to probably be using fucking 10 different blockchains. It is what it is. Probably more than that. Like that's just the way that this shit is going. So it's like, if you're, if you're just going to not pay attention to other tech and not pay attention to just what's going on and you want to be completely ignorant about it, like by all means, go ahead. But I feel like that's like the complete antithesis of why you even got into the space in the first place. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Ash, are you getting into the what are you what are your thoughts on the meme coin meta? What are your thoughts on the celebrity coin meme coin meta? All that kind of stuff. Oh man. Um, you know, I, I've obviously I love meme coins, but I think that like it's just it's just too much. Uh, right now there's so such an oversaturation. Um, you know, as much as I think Pump Fun was was interesting, I think it really created um now just everybody is looking to have a quick, you know, 100x and move on which i mean it kind of was always been that way but i feel like it was less that way and when i first started i feel like it was more about community and yes we all wanted to make money but it wasn't about this every every hour or or now every minute there's there's new meme coins there's new like mad stressful <laughs> yeah. yeah to trade every day seems so fucking stressful right now yeah like, like i i can't sit at my cu- computer all day I just can't i i used to back in 2021 and 2022 and it made my made myself miserable i was at the lowest health of my life i was just constantly doing that kind of stuff and i feel like it the the meme coin meta is going to die a very uh painful death like like i i'm not talking about just solid meme coins i'm talking about just the the constant you know continuous throw up of, of meme coins and with celebs um i they, they kind of were, were doing this and in, in with 2021 nfts where they were constantly promoting stuff like some of the same celebrities that are coming to make meme coins were actually around in 2021 and a lot of people didn't know that you know you see zach xpt commenting yeah. about all their old scams and things like that and i think that um, you know, it's never going to stop. It's just not, especially if we get into the bull market, it's only going to get worse. And that is something that we have to accept because the only way to stop that is through making it more centralized. And that's not what any of us wants. So the only thing that, that we can do if you're sick of it is just not buy it. But then, you know, you can also just be sad that you're missing out on a hundred X, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a complicated feeling because I hate it, but I also understand why it's there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the, I like the meme coins that have nothing to do with one particular person, you know? It's yes. Like, I like the ones where it's just like, it's a, it's the community's vibe and they're having fun with it. There's a meme that they run with whatever, what I hate, you know, and, and I go back to like the celebrity meme coin meta, like there are certain people like Iggy who I think have done a really good job yeah. of actually. I love Iggy. She's like the playbook at this point. Yeah. She's yeah. the only celebrity really that made a meme coin that I think is actually here to be here for us versus all the other ones. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I will say after like sitting down with Caitlyn Jenner, like I wasn't sure what that was going to be like. And at one point her and her manager, Sophia said to us like, Hey, can we turn cameras off? And can we actually just like talk about the space? And we were like, yeah, for sure. And we sat there for like an hour shooting the shit about the space and our thoughts on it and everything like that. And it was like, there was no, it wasn't her saying like, how do we pump this thing? It Mm -hmm. It wasn't even that. It was literally a conversation about our thoughts on the space our thoughts on why people are hating the celebrity meme coin meta and kind of how you, like if you're going to do it, like what people reasonably expect from you in a way that like, you know, isn't going to make people feel like they're just getting used and abused by celebrities who are just chasing a bag. Right. And we had a very authentic, normal conversation about it. 
And, you know, and mind you, at her home, which I was like, that's crazy that we even yeah. got invited to her house. That's to kind begin of with. amazing. Honestly, I, I didn't like Caitlyn Jenner at first, but she she's growing on me, honestly. Like every time I hear something like I, I watched, you know, what, what you and Jakey did. And then I, I watched, you know, Mika's podcast as well. And I just was like, I, I feel like the more celebrities, if they participate then I feel like it's okay. But if you pull, you know, a, a Jason Derulo or this other guy that I mentioned earlier, I forgot his name, or, or Lil Pump, you know, well, the, the the people that come in and just post a contract address, like that's never the move. Like you're just, you're clearly here just for money. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, naming it after themselves. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ, bro. Nobody wants a fucking Jason token. Nobody no. wants a fucking who nobody wants a flocka token. Nobody wants a whatever the fuck your name is. We don't care. Like yeah. Yeah. make something that's funny at least. Right. And at that's the very least. That I mean, honestly, that's what Iggy did such a Literally. great job of. His mother is a token that people could enjoy, whether you're an Iggy fan, not an Iggy fan, if you just like like the term mother, you know, whatever people could make that, they can run with it, they can create merch around it. Like there's so many things that I could see mother doing that I just can't see somebody's name doing. And and so again, to me it's like it's such an easy thing to be like, I'm gonna I'm fifty cent, I'm gonna drop a coin called G unit, you know, whatever. And it's like uh, okay, but like, why would I buy G Unit and continue to post about G Unit? You yeah. know, <laughs> like yeah. I we were on the plane to Tampa when that went live, and I bought it because I saw it like instantly, and then I bought it and I was like, wait. No one's going to buy this shit. Like, and so I instantly sold it, sold it like two minutes later. And it was like the P and L pops up and it was like 11%. And I was like, I was like barely made anything on it. And then it was like 10 minutes later died completely, which also shout out to uh, whatever airline United uh, for proper Wi-Fi Cause I was able to meet oh, my train from the air. Oh, look um, at you. But you know, it was like, yeah, no one's going to buy that. Cause people don't want to buy something that's like somebody's name or whatever. They, they fuck with things that are more ambiguous, a little bit more like fun and, and yes. you know, because that's what we're doing with meme coins. It's a fun kind of gamble, you know, whatever. We don't want this like self-indulgent, I'm naming something after my own self. Like it just doesn't really hit like that. So again, mm -hmm. and I don't fault the celebrities for not knowing it, but I would say don't nah, watch a coin until, point, you, until you know it. They until you should know. It. know. Don't, at this point, all celebrities coming out with a fucking token, I am definitely 100% blaming y'all. Like yeah, there's, you there's, can't blame Sahil like, all the time. Yeah, no, nah, we're 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 past that whole like, oh, Sahil hacked me and like, oh, blah, blah blah. Like he's getting in with way too many celebrities. You've already like, if you haven't even taken five minutes out of your fucking day to see what Iggy has done, what happened with Caitlyn Jenner, and like all this shit that literally just happened like two weeks ago. Like if you're a celebrity and you haven't taken five minutes to even just like. Look at it. I'm a hundred percent blaming you. Or that. even I'm blaming, that. I'm blaming your manager. I'm no, blaming I'm yeah. blaming both. No, no, no. I'm not. That. I'm not blaming the PR celebrity. people. Fuck on the celebrity these. too. No, no. I'm not. I'm not blaming <laughs> celebrity. I'm blaming, hundred percent no, blaming no. them. I'm not blaming them because they're not. If you are a celebrity that like, if to be fair, I don't expect you to have time to learn about this shit. I wouldn't tell you to learn about it. Like it's a the one me. the ones that are posting. I hundred percent expect you to have the time. We're talking about Jason Derulo, Lil Pump. Fucking brother, you think Waka those, Flocka? You I think, don't even you think know. They the don't last... have time on their hands. No, no, no. I'm saying okay. Waka Flocka. <laughs> True. Wait, wait, you think they wait, don't wait. have time on their hands? When's the last thing? Wait, when's wait. the last song that Jason Derulo made? That's I don't what even I'm know. Saying. He doesn't even need songs anymore. He's just getting enough of loyalty Jason checks. Jason Derulo. But, yeah, he's got enough just <laughs> off that shit. But the no, but like today, Waka Flocka has been posting on Twitter. He's at an event in in uh, in Nashville, and he is partaking in a beer Olympics. So there's quite literally zero ways he's tweeting right now about his coin but yet he's tweeting about his coin i blame their managers because their managers are the ones that are doing this shit and that's where that's a whole nother conversation whole nother podcast we won't have time to dive into <laughs> that of why people need to have better managers because there's a lot of managers that probably are telling their you know their client like hey you're gonna get paid x y and z off this at the same time they're probably the ones who are doing the research who are like hey i'm gonna go set up a few other wallets buy this shit and and i'm gonna get myself a far larger check than i would uh, get just being their manager and like and that's where they're getting scammed so again i'm not mm, really blaming the celebrity that's per se spicy. because I, I i really don't think the majority of them have any clue like bobby antonoff or whatever the podcast th chick, yeah she posted she posted one yesterday there is no way that chick is is learning about crypto knows anything about that her manager was like here's an opportunity for her to get a bag took it 
And like, and that's that. And I'm just like, that to me, I'm blaming the managers. We've got a lot of shitty managers out there. And then I think, you know, what'll happen is the, the point where they'll learn is when one of them gets sued. So that's where they'll yeah. learn. I feel you. Blaming the managers for sure. I'm still definitely saying like, nah. At this point, I just think we're past the fact of like, trying to leave the celebrities out of it. Like you guys are making videos. You guys are fucking posting, whether it's you posting or not, like take control of your shit then like figure it out. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm past the whole, like, Oh, let's absolve them from fucking like taking blame. It's the heels fault. It's the manager's fault, whatever. Like the celebrities we're mentioning have more than enough time on their hands to take five minutes to understand like, yikes maybe i shouldn't do this like this this probably isn't a good look for me or like Mm -hmm. i can or let me do it when i can actually take some time and like put a little bit more thought and actually like plan it out with my manager at least make your first post like hey can you tell me about this like do they do that with like all of their other businesses i doubt it like i'm sure like their their manager is not fucking like a and ring their next album and shit like that. Like you can take control of of whatever it is that well, you want to take control are, of. Those are a bit different. Though. Yeah, but what I'm saying is you <laughs> could take control of what you want to take control of. I'm not absolving the celebrity at this point. Like it was cute three weeks ago. Now it's like nah. I mean, I I will say I I and I'm not defending celebrities. I I am just saying the majority of them. It's it's quite literally like. With any sort of brand deal, whatever, you are paid X, Y, and Z, told to post X, Y, and Z, and the majority of them don't look ultra deep into it because they have busy schedules. It is what it is. Again, I blame the team around them, and that in, in return, that does blame them of putting themselves around bad managers and things like that, but like I blame the team around them that has quite literally nothing to do but make sure that they don't you know, set themselves up for scams or to get sued down the road or anything like that. And those are the times where, again, I I blame the managers and therefore blaming the artist or whatever for not having better management. But like, I do think it is also our job to then educate people because the reality of it is, again, people are going to continue to look at crypto as a scam until we stand up and say, hey, we're not doing this shit. You know, I look at like, you know, uh, Andrew Tate right now. And Mm. it's like, this guy's bull posting the N word. That is the craziest thing that I've ever seen, and it's so disgusting, and I absolutely hate it. I despise it. It makes everybody who comes into the crypto space and looks at that shit, and they're like, that coin people are buying? Like, the fuck? And it's like, it just, it's so dirty and grimy to me, and that's where I feel like we need the crypto space to stand up and go, hey, if you want people to stop like calling us scammers and stop saying that like this whole thing is a bunch of bullshit and all that, stop supporting that bullshit. Yes. Because, like, and if Andrew Tate wants to to you know launch a coin or whatever, bro, do it. Launch Top G, something something like that. Whatever you want to do, just like the bull posting the N word is the cringiest thing, and it just makes our whole space look like shit. And and yeah. that's where. I think, again, it requires us stepping up. I'm not going to ask Andrew Tate to be the, the moral compass of, of crypto. Like, no, I, uh, God, no. Um, I am expecting our space to go, hey, we don't want people to keep looking at us as like a scam and a bunch of like degenerate idiots. So like maybe we stop supporting the stupid shit like that. Yeah, That's how I feel. And it is what it is. I just think like, again, look at, you can look at Iggy, you can look at mother. And I think that is like the proper way of doing it if you are going to do it. But I also think it requires our space going, Hey, I'm not going to accept this bullshit. And we need to call that out. We can't let that fly. And until that coin is at F and zero, we haven't learned my take. I think that's just the unfortunate reality of like the market a bit, because like, I don't know. People, people are gonna like just do whatever for a bag, right? And then like, we're that's te- the th- worst. Then like, we're never gonna get respect. That's like the worst. Part I about I it. agree with you, Mark. Honestly, because as much as people like, I feel like the meta has been. Uh, you know, we can say what we want. We fight for our right. <laughs> I posted something kind of spicy that people didn't like. I, I I posted that people seem to fight for their right to say slurs versus fight for actually getting more um getting us out more like getting us into web 2 like are 100%. we really trying to bridge the gap or are we trying to say words that offend people around us and, and, and like what's the point of it like what what joy does it give you what joy does it give you to say that word and offend the people around you you know it it just doesn't it's never made sense um and uh, it's it's disheartening and 
if we ever think that we are going to go to mainstream that way, then I, I agree with you. I, I feel like we're sorely mistaken. And if we ever want to be taken seriously, you know, like at least, at least like make it, make it separate somehow. I don't know. I, and that takes away the decentralization aspect, which is, you know, what we're against too. So it's kind of complicated. It's a very um, nuanced thing that, that we have to deal with. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll state this. I'll state this. I'm all for people making a bag. I, I get all of that. At some point, you got to look yourself in the mirror and just be like, "Am I making my bag the right way?" There's 60 trillion coins that launch every single week. You do not need to support a coin that has a slur in it in order to make a bag. So if you are doing that, you are part of the problem. I don't give a shit if you're not doxxed. I don't give a shit if nobody knows that you bought it, whatever. You are part of the fucking problem. And if you don't understand that, then you need to like wake up, smell the roses, do one ounce of critical thinking, and to think that you are part of holding back the space because we are going to look like a bunch of idiots and all of, and, and scammy bullshit until we stop supporting the people who come into the space and intentionally... Andrew Tate has said he thinks the crypto people are a bunch of fucking dorks. Oh, and yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I would have yeah. fucking... I would have fucking... Y'all should have been gone against him when he made that video that was like, I think everybody in crypto is a loser. All right, fuck you too. Yeah. Like, he has yeah. no redeeming yeah. qualities. Yeah, like y'all should have y'all should have been gone at him. But it's just like it's it's the thing of like the people that like there's just there's not enough pride in some of these people that are trading, right? And being talked to in a certain way and like all this shit. There's just like a lack of pride um that you can just like you could see in their behavior you know what i'm saying and like that's that's the unfortunate part of like the market deciding is because like you can't get people to just like stop like using their wallets and like spending on whatever they want to spend on i think for for anything it's more so like just being able to drown out all that attention with more like things that you want to see and 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 builders and positive things, all that sort of stuff. To me, it's more so about drowning out the bullshit versus being like, this shit shouldn't exist. Because, you know, to that point of decentralization, like the unfortunate part is like, that's just the reality of what we have to deal with. But if we can drown it out, then we're the ones taking back control of it. Yeah, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't have the right to launch it. They should have the right to launch it. That's It is what it is. We live in a, a free world. People should be able to do that. I'm saying... You also get to choose what you support and you don't need to support that. You don't need to buy it. You don't need to support it. You don't need to whatever. Andrew Tate is a fucking loser. Like it's stop supporting that bozo. Like all he is is a grifter who tries to make money off of every single like random person who will give him his money. If you're supporting that, <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just going to keep it a real, like who actually wants the lifestyle of living in a lonely house in Romania <laughs> where you can't go anywhere else. Like, I don't care how many fucking supercars yeah. you have. Like, if you can't walk this earth freely wherever, that doesn't really sound like that great of a lifestyle. I <laughs> mean, know, that's... To, like, listen to. Like, I don't know. He caters mostly to incels, um, people that have nothing around them because they are so hateful because they maybe had one bad interaction with a person or, or specifically a female, which he, you know, galvanizes. Um, like that's his, his main platform is, you know, like everything that I've seen about him is always sh shitting on women. And, and honestly, uh, being in crypto, there was a time where I felt like that was more where crypto was, is, is they didn't really like women being in the space. Uh, but I feel like even now, even with people like Andrew Tate and, and you things. You still see that bullshit, which is mm -hmm. lame to see. I, I see it way less now, though. I, I feel like more yeah. respected now as a per, as a person versus just a, a woman in the space. I get less DMs like before. Um, and, and I feel like we are in a way getting better, but it doesn't visually feel that way because there's people like Andrew Tate out there saying all these terrible things and people solidifying it. And that is what's being pushed in the algo because, um, unfortunately negativity, um, is boosted more than positivity. And that's because it gets more likes, it has more conversation. And that is the unfortunate thing. And, and the only thing we can do that if we hate it is put out good shit. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think at the end of the day, you know, it, it's like, 
we have to move this space forward and you got to think about how your contributions are helping that. And I will say one of the things that's happened in the last year, which I think has been great is we have far more people who are doxxed and let's be real. Like the people who are non docs say much crazier shit than the people who are docs in your face and your name are out there. It's a lot harder to talk crazy and send when you- you're not saying it with your chest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know? And, and so that's where I'm like, okay, the more people that we have docs, the better off we are that, you know, again, holds people to a standard of people know what you look like. They know who you are. You're probably not going to talk as reckless. I think that's a good thing. Um, but, you know, like I ha- I had somebody when I, I tweeted something negative about Andrew Tate and they were like, say it to his face. And I was like, all right, tell him to come to America. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait, he can't. can't. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, shut up, dude. Like, and also I would say it to his face. Like, what is he going to do? Hit me. But again, it's like, I don't know. We just we have to step up. We have to police our own shit. And I think everybody needs to take a hard look at what they are contributing to this space and asking themselves, am I helping lead this space into true adoption or am I just grifting the shit out of this? And I just want to pretend like I'm not, you know. And so, again, it goes for everybody. Everybody plays a role. I don't care if you have 100 followers, 100,000 followers, a million followers, whatever. You play a role in where this space goes. So if you are contributing on a daily basis of supporting, uh, you know, meme coins that have slurs in them and stuff like that, you are holding this space back. Like, you get to choose how you want to have the effect. And it's time that we look ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, if we want the respect because it is going to happen. Crypto's not going anywhere. Crypto will get adopted. It's just we control how long that takes. If we want it to take 15, 20 years, then let's keep going down the path we're going down. Or if we say, hey, you know what? Maybe let's clean up our shit a little bit and just be slightly better hit, behaved. I'm not even, I, I feel like I'm not asking a lot to be like, don't buy meme coins that have a slur in them. <laughs> like, I feel like maybe that's, <laughs> you're asking way too much, Mark. Yeah, like, you're asking way too much. Come on, you know, <laughs> like there. I feel like there are some people though, which is funny because it's like you mentioned about like the people that want to like push this space forward. Um, and I almost feel like we have like a little bit of rift right now, where it's like there's people, and especially like the non account type people that almost want to gatekeep crypto and like not mm-hmm. not welcome in more people and not have like more people involved. And they're like, oh, like like get the like. I saw a comment on um, one of Mika's like market yeah videos. market updates. You, you, par- you might know what I'm talking I about. I actually posted a they- video response to that. Okay, yeah. So yeah. where this dude was talking about like, oh, like I miss when crypto didn't have these fucking like like whatever something types creators, of people. types of people, and all mm-hmm. this sort of stuff. And it's like, brother, Mika has been around for fucking like three something years. She's fucking like might have outtraded you on She's nfts she's been the og's fucking, clubhouse yeah, literally and is now making more content making like has continued to just like elevate her game um and put out content and put out stuff that like people can digest that aren't just in this space and you're upset at that because of 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 what like you don't want people to enter crypto you don't want people talking about crypto because quite honestly like if you don't have these creators you don't have these videos coming out you don't have people bull posting you don't have people talking about it i promise you this shit could get really bleak really quickly and boring as hell like and, i mean yeah, and boring as hell. like i, I go back but like the pvp man i mean you guys are gonna be fucking like i mean i've been in, i've been in crypto for eight years the space has been much more fun the last two or three because we have far more creators around it. And it's not like there weren't creators before, but the creators before were either like tech analysis, you know, very smart people that are talking about stuff that like 99% of people can't understand. Or you have the shilly bullshit of like, again, we go back to it. The Here are the 10 coins you should be buying right now. And if you're not, you're bozo. Mark, you just do that a little too well I don't know, <laughs> in your past life. Like, no, that was my... Was I'm not a, shilly yeah. with like a mask on or something. Like, a former KOL, not, YouTube KOL. I think I was using Mark Holzer <laughs> as my username when I was like 10. Like <laughs> Xbox, you were going to know who was talking shit to you back then. Um, yeah, no, I just... Uh, yeah, we have to... Uh, content creators play a big role. But again, I will state again, I think everybody plays a big role in it. And it's like, it's up to you to determine if you want to help move the space forward. And there's probably plenty of people who are hearing this right now that are like, I have no desire to help. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do Literally. you? But yeah. like, 
you know, for the Get rest the of us. Get the fuck out the way, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop being so mean to people that are actually trying to bring more people in because that will be what you call the exit liquidity. But, I mean, no, not not for real. But, but I mean, how, like, those old school people, the old school crypto people, like, how do they expect crypto to ever have any kind of place at the table if we are not getting new people in? Right, right. And or it's, oh, go for it. There you go. No, I was going to say, or it's like you have those dudes that are like, name everybody on the team like that's how they fucking like come at it with crypto where they were like all right we'll fucking explain the blockchain and explain different this and th that and what coding language are they using it's like brother they don't even need to know all of that fucking shit to be involved mm -hmm. and just like start understanding and start digesting this information like nobody is starting on day one with fucking like I know everything about cryptocurrency and blockchain now. I'm ready to fucking make my first transaction. It's yeah. not happening. Yeah, and that, and like, I mean, you know, I was onboarded because a buddy of mine whose family was from Iran, he was like, you know, our currency is very unstable and like this is a great way for me to like, make sure that my family has money and like they have access to their money no matter where they're at. And so, uh, you know, instead of dealing with the crazy inf uh, inflation and everything like that, we hold an asset like Bitcoin and, you know, sure it has its, you know, volatility to it, but from an actual like structural standpoint, it makes a lot more sense. And, uh, and then he's like, and then I can send from America back to Iran, I can send Bitcoin and it's much easier than if I was doing any other sort of payment method. And I was like, well, that's enough to onboard me. Knew nothing else about the tech yeah. other than like that makes sense. And use cases is what onboards people. Yeah. Not the shit that's under the hood. Right. And speaking of use cases, we had everything that rolled out today with Solana. Um, super oh, exciting. Yeah, that was awesome. You just blinked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, just I, blinked again. I wasn't getting what the uh, what the you know, they had the tweet that was they kept tweeting out the other day, like, don't blink or something like that. And, and I was, you blinked, you know, and I was <laughs> like, I wonder what this is going to be about. And they rolled that out. And it's like the the connection with X is very cool. I'm excited to see where that goes. I would love to see more social media platforms onboarding in that way. That would be God, that would make me so bullish if they can take that same tech, take that to Instagram, take that to oh, TikTok. Oh, wow, yeah. Like, if that happens, I know we are going to deal with the scammers that come in and try to use that in a negative way. But again, that's where I go back to. It is the role of people who are already in the space to help educate new people coming in on how to avoid all of those scams and all that kind of shit, which has been done in every space previously, from, mm -hmm. from video games to trading card games to... Uh, you know, every other previous platform, e-commerce in the early 2000s, like there have always been people that have had to step up and help educate people on how to avoid the scams. It is up to us to do that now for people who are coming in. But I would love to see, uh, you know, everything that Solana is doing right now incorporated into uh, all these other social platforms. And I think when that happens, it's going to be one of the biggest onboarding, uh, you know, activities we've ever seen. I don't know yeah. if it's there now, but I would love to see if there's... Um like some sort of integration with Tiplink on Blinks, because isn't Tiplink like you can like set up a wallet with yeah. an email address? Mm -hmm. And so if there's a way where it's just like you have a balance in your wallet that's associated with your email address, and you don't even have to like necessarily like do like the sign signing, like if you were doing the Phantom or something like that. Like I feel like that might take it. That would be crazier. really cool, like, especially if you go on something like Instagram or TikTok. Like I feel like that shit will go. That shit might go crazy. A hundred percent. hundred percent. All this stuff is like we have we have so many things that are working for us. And it's just about like us now saying, OK, hey, let's you know, we have hopefully a next year or so ahead of us of a bull market and everything like that. Let's take a lot of this and build on on the reputation of crypto. Show everybody all the use cases of it because there are so many great use cases of it. And again, it's up to us to like make the right content that showcase that so mm -hmm. somebody else has a reason for why they want to get involved. Because if you don't give people that reason, they're not going to come in. So, yes. you know, that's why we have to support the builders who are building these very, very cool things because... I'm not going to sit here and act like I know how to build all of that shit. I have no idea. I trust the people who are sitting there. Uh, you know, the people we know like, you don't know how to build anything. Yeah, you really know, <laughs> I, su I support Raj and Tolly. I support Bartosh and Jordan. I support Mert and everything he's doing. <laughs> all these incredible people that we have in this space that are building all these, you know, very, very cool things. I pay attention to them. Let Meow do what he does. And like, 
you know, and, and then our job is to create content around that so we can help educate the people who are coming in. And if we do that and we can spread the word of crypto and we can change the narrative that, you know, has already been established and we're getting there. We mm-hmm. just got to keep doing what we're doing and showcase people why they should pay attention to crypto. And hopefully as we get into this next election, crypto is going to become even more of a talking point. And, uh, you know, maybe we can start to normalize this as a, you know, a, a common thing that people get. And once that point happens, we're going to have some real fun times. If we think we've had oh, fun times yeah. now, wait till everybody understands all this shit. So, God. To that point, I did want to ask about uh, the ring on your finger. Oh. Um, just because um, I feel like, I don't know, for me, I've had a bunch of people ask me about this. Like, oh, Same. what is that? What are you wearing? Um, I've, like, posted about it a few times. And, like, you know, I think... We, we've had this notion of like, oh, meme coins are going to be the ones that like onboard people and that's going to get attention and all this stuff. But I've had so many people just like ask me about crypto just through just posting of like either like Killer 3 stuff or mm-hmm. games um, or then this, the cooties ring, right? With like fitness and like posting fitness content and that sort of thing. I wanted to like just ask, have you, have you seen that kind of similar reaction to either people asking about the ring or if you post any content about it, like people being like, Oh, shit. I didn't even know that existed within crypto. Oh, gosh. Yeah. P- I, I get this all the time, especially like when I, I, I always play with it. I'm always like because it's, it's kind of so like a fun. fidget spinner. It's so fun. This is honestly the the probably the best feature, not because it's not a good ring or anything. It, it's because uh, whenever you're in a conversation, sometimes if you're absent-minded, like I have ADD real bad, so I have to be doing this or something. I've even been playing it, <laughs> playing with it in this podcast. And when I, (laughs) exactly, it's like, it's great. And then people ask me about that and then I get to explain, you know, it's an AI ring and people get excited about that kind of stuff. And and that's not the first time that I've worn something crypto related and had it asked about, like I'll wear a shirt or I'll wear like a piece of merch and people will be like, oh, that looks really cool. Where is it from? And that's the coolest way to onboard people is because, because it's so organic. And that's why I love, you know, content. It feels like is that way too with you know like like your merch is your content on your body and then your videos are your content that gets out to the world and and it just makes it so much cooler for people to see like oh you're playing with this it's like a fidget spinner what is that and then you explain like hey this is an ai ring and you get reward simply by wearing it and using it and it's through crypto and it's like oh what's you know how does crypto work and it's just such a easy conversation starter yeah Especially talking about the rewards part. Like, it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. you can actually get rewarded for just the shit that you're already doing, which is taking steps, sleeping, and, like, mm-hmm. making sure you get your heart rate up. Like, you might actually get some tokens out of this maybe one day, you do know? You, do you get sleep? Yeah, I get sleep. Yeah, good sleep. Yeah. I guess I'm pretty oh, you're not days. really in the trenches then. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. His ring, <laughs> his, no, he is in the trenches. That's why his ring data shows that his sleep is ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I had a point last week. Uh, I don't know. I had posted one to the time, but it was like two hours and 30 minutes of like deep sleep and like maybe like two hours of light sleep and. It yeah. was it was bad. It was bad. I'm excited yeah. to compete. We're gonna have to come up with a challenge for a uh, a sleep off. <laughs> oh what no! What the fuck is how to see sleep off? In sleep to see who no, he wants to compete with me in the most <laughs> random shit. Oh, I could out Pilates you. I could out sleep <laughs> you. I could fucking y'all are like a I married couple like, without the marriage, and you know without the attraction. Hopefully. Uh, or maybe hopefully not. i don't know absolutely <laughs> you know who knows hell no <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that hell no. i mean he texts me every once in a while i'm like you looking cute today <laughs> i've never texted you that before in your life. actually you we, just want to do pilates so you line. can see the butt actually <laughs> that's what I, honestly that might be it like <laughs> that's crazy that's cra- no we had uh last week i was on i was on telegram when we were on our flight to tampa and somebody somebody uh messages me on telegram and it's a fake sunny account and they messaged me, <laughs> GM legend. And I was like, Sonny would never hit me up like that. Like, Sonny would hit me with, like, fuck you or, like, sup. I actually, words I can't use on this podcast. <laughs> um, like, it would it would not be GM legend. Uh, that are words that are never coming out of Sonny's mouth. So, yeah, it's more like GM ho. Yeah, yeah. And I just responded back. I was like, we're not doing this. And the person deleted their account immediately. <laughs> I was like, like, brother, that is not. No, you are not going to try to scam me being Sonny. Like, I know him better than you. I know how he talks to me. 
GM legend is not coming That's out of his mouth. That's the funniest scam to me. Like going to two friends and pretending to be them. Of course you can't pretend to be them. Right, right. But now I'm going to get, actually, once I tweeted out, like, you know, Sonny's more likely to just text me F you. I got like 10 DMs. F you. <laughs> and I was just like, well, okay. You should have been like, I didn't fucking welcome y'all to do it. Yeah, we don't like, have that type of relationship. Yeah, I was like, maybe not my intentions of that, but okay. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, but uh, okay, so Ashley, I know we got to wrap this up shortly here. But like, what are you, what are you buying right now? Is there anything that you're like anything you're excited about? I know we just talked about like the celebrity meme coins not being our thing, but are there like are you buying other meme coins? Are you is there any that you've been loading up on as we've had this dip recently? Are there any utility coins? Are you just buying ETH and Solana? Are you just not buying anything right now? Where are you at? Honestly, right now I'm just holding a lot of things. Like I, I'm restacking some of the other stuff that I've had. Like I have a lot of Mog, a lot of Moo, a lot of just kind of random stuff. Um, like I have, I have probably way more meme coins. Even though it's funny because I mentioned earlier the meme coin, um, you know, meta will will die, and I don't mean like actual meme coins in itself, but I mean pump fun meme coins in in my opinion. But yeah, I've got I got a ton of um, meme coins, uh, and I probably should be more into like like I have a little bit of Bitcoin, I have some Solana, I have a lot of Ethereum, like uh, that. That's just I've had that forever. So it, it's not like I feel like I'm not buying as much as I should. I'm actually kind of like buying a little more uh, like NFTs, not as much recently, but I feel like NFTs are kind of more the play. But there you go. Yeah, the yeah. Some NFTs. I mean the 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 last NFT I bought was a D God, so you know, Let's can't go. can't help it. Yeah, well, yeah. there we go. Yeah, we'll that's, love to hear that. yeah. So I mean, right now though, I feel like the market is so unsure. There's so many factors that I feel like I don't know whether to keep buying a ton of stuff or just kind of sit on my hands because there's so much that goes into. Um, like, like in 2022, I feel like when we saw the bear market happen, it just happened out of nowhere. It felt like it just was like a gut punch. And maybe some people will say, um, oh yeah, we expected this or we expected this or whatever. And it's still such a volatile industry that you just don't know. So right now I feel like sitting on your hands and kind of keeping your bags where they are is kind of the, the move because you don't know whether or not, you know, you, you don't know whether or not, like, let, let's say, for example, um, that that bill that that uh, Biden vetoed. Mm -hmm. I feel like that killed a lot of people, like when it came to like, I, I feel like that was one of the reasons why uh, crypto had a bit of a dip in, in a few other things, of course. So I feel like right now, um, politically, there's there's a lot that needs to be known first before I'm bloating up again, basically. That's that, yeah. a long, long way of saying right now I'm sitting on my hands. <laughs> you know, and that's a that's a good there's strategy a lot of times. Just holding your bags and yeah. seeing how it's going to play out. You know, listen, everybody, you always have the option to spot buy on Cube Exchange. Let me clarify. I do that on <laughs> Cube Exchange, <laughs> um, which, by the way, the referral link is in is in this uh, bio below. Hey, don't use <laughs> Mark's referral link. <laughs> Don't use Mark's referral link. Just come over to my page and uh, make sure you get. No, Sony's don't 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 even link. do that. Just go. Just look below because I just added it conveniently for That's us. So oh, easy. Oh, so convenient. <laughs> but anywho, we're gonna have to. We're gonna talk about this. Oh off yeah. Y'all need a joint account. Y'all need a joint we, referral. We do need a joint account. I don't know we're if he's gonna, gonna go about for that, it. but I think we do we need. We could have a D weekly. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I'm okay. good with that. Okay. We can still have our own individuals when we're shilling our own, but like. Oh, well, that defeats the purpose then. Who's what do you mean? mean? We'll talk about it off yeah. camera. Anywho, <laughs> you can always spot by on Cube Exchange and just chill. Like, mm -hmm. you can just DCA and it doesn't oh, that's matter. A, that's a good one. And just chill. Yeah, DCA and chill. You know? On Cube. Uh, yeah, I definitely was not the first person to say DCA and chill. Let me <laughs> clarify that that has been said before. But um, you can do that. You can do that. So DCA and chill on Cube Exchange and, uh, you know. That way you don't need to worry about like I always I always say to people, I'm like, when crypto dips, I'm like, are you not DCAing still? Because like mm -hmm. if you weren't going to sell today, does it really matter? You know, like exactly. exactly. I get the red days are not fun, but like but like it shouldn't better entry. It shouldn't make you be emotional if your whole thesis has been long term the entire time. Exactly. Like I could give a fuck if Solana's at 130 right now or 180. I think this shit is going way higher. Yeah. So it's just like for me, I'm holding my bags and like we're going to see it play out. Going to continue to fucking obviously just like do what I do to help impact the ecosystem. 
And like, hopefully everybody else is on, on that same wave as well. But like, I'm not going to fucking trip over like these macro f- or these micro fucking price fluctuations when my vision is so much longer than mm-hmm. fucking like six months or even a year. Like my shit, like, I don't know. It's just like you'd be selling yourself so short right now. Something that Farouk told me um, was that never hold anything that you are scared of holding. Like if you go to a red day and you're scared of everything going to zero, you probably shouldn't be holding it at all because you don't actually have conviction. You're just buying it to buy it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, that's that's big facts. and. You know, it's uh, and I and I will say one other thing is that when we do have the red days and I and I say this to people all the time and they they always think I'm like crazy for this take. But I'm like on the red days when when the whole timeline is absolutely depressing, uh, onboard your friends at that time. Stop doing it when we are in peak yes. euphoria and prices are incredibly high. Do it when we are bleak and like <laughs> that is where they have upside. If you are truly good friends with somebody, maybe give them some upside. But when you always hear the stories of people that are like, I onboarded my family at all time high. And I'm like, you know, you could have done it when we were bleak, you know, yeah. like you had that opportunity and I get, it's not as easy of a shill when we're, when we're down bad, but like that is where the upside is. It's not when we're at, you know, right now, if you were shilling your family at Bitcoin at 72 K when the ETF went through and everything like that, and you're not shilling them at 60? <laughs> what are you doing? Do you not like your family? Like, you don't want to give them some upside? Like, give your family some upside. That's why you just shill 24-7. Yeah. And well, then... Stay consistent. Whenever you want to get in, that's on you. I have nothing to do with that. I just... Hey, I, I tell I tell people all the time, when I'm straight depressed, that's when I hit up my other friends. And I'm like, it's a great time to buy crypto. And then they're like, well, I see it's down right now. I'm like, yeah, that's a great well, time to yeah. buy it. That's why, you know, I'm not going to tell you to buy it at all time high. Like, that, you know, I'm trying to be a good friend here. So try to give you some upside. I'm trying to help you. a fake good friend. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. You know, Sonny? Y'all are so cute. I'll punch him off this podcast, you know? <laughs> this guy. Don't tell him he's cute, you know? He, he ain't that, you know? Hey, I said y'all are cute. Nah, that's, we are like old married couple. It really is to be like that. No. No, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can't even agree on that. <laughs> oh, anywho. So we should we wrap up this episode? This was Ashley. We appreciate you coming on. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're going to have to, we got to run this back more often. Always appreciate chatting with you. It was cool to hear your whole story. I didn't, I didn't know all of that. So it was, uh, and I'm glad you're not getting half those DMs that you were getting before. Yeah. Very oh, thank God. Yeah. Thanks That's for awesome. having me. Yeah. And thank you for to all the men that stopped sending me that. I'm very grateful for that. And shout out to the people who never did. Like, yeah. yeah literally. Hey, hey, you know, you stop, know? literally. Stop I still it. can't get over that you minted their picks because that to me oh, is man. so fucking funny. So That's awesome. genius. God, that is... The shout one, out, out to you. the one that went viral was the guy that he put a very small piece of paper over it or next to it with my name on it, so you could tell how tiny it was, and that is the one that went viral at Reddit. Jesus, so God. funny! Oh and he, lies. the first DM back was, "You better stop it right now." That's what Andrew Tate said to you. Not yet. Oh, <laughs> oh spicy! <damn. laughs> that was a zinger. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Look yeah. at you. That's a whole on the podcast. That was a that was a bar. I was getting ready for Banger. that one. <laughs> I had to think it in here. Look at you. So proud of yourself. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, don't send unsolicited dick pics, you weirdos. Um, and with that, just send solicited ones. <laughs> there. <laughs> just don't. Just don't. Just don't. They're, they're dicks. Okay, stop doing that. Okay. Um, um, no, wait. Before we wrap up, though, you know what we got to wrap up with. I got a gift for Ashley. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Yeah. This is I love just gifts. A, for all the guests that come on, we, uh, well, I. Oh, that's cr- <laughs> <laughs> I get no, I get, this is, this is crazy. No thanks we to you, mer- Mark. We give merch out. I love and merch. So- Ooh. Here we go. Here we go. We got the oh full my gosh. Killer Threes pack for you. <gasps> here we go. There we go. I love Killer Threes. Here we go. Here it is. Oh snap! Oh, I love jerseys. Oh, is it is this shorts or a jersey? Shorts. Oh my god, I love the shorts. And yes. a fire killer three shirt. Oh, dude! Oh my god, yes. My favorite shirt yet. Oh, this is. Oh my god, yeah. I I am a sucker for merch, and I will be literally wearing this until 
it has holes in it, and even then, I'll still be wearing it. <laughs> we'll see you at the uh, at the game. In Texas yeah, with San it. Antonio. I'll be there for sure. There we go. It's gonna be a good time. Well, mm-hmm. hey, appreciate everybody tuning in, and uh, we'll chat with you guys soon. Make sure you go check out a Killer Threes game, and uh, make sure again you're DCA and chilling on, on Cube Exchange. And outside of that, tell your mother you work at Bitcoin. Sure. <laughs> yes. No one can deny it. True. Oh, she's not gonna. <laughs> so, why not? <laughs> Anywho, we'll talk to y'all later. See you guys. <laughs>